Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card for the Fall Lovers Co Fall Coffee Lovers Blog Hop which runs from September 25th to October 2nd and you can submit a card with a fall and a coffee theme in order to win a prize from a number of sponsors including Newton's Nook Designs and today I will be using a stamp set from Newton's Nook Designs called Newton Loves Coffee. This stamp set is absolutely stinking adorable. I love coffee and I love Newton. So I am very excited for this. I've used it on several cards already and it's going to be probably one of my go-to sets. I am addicted to coffee. I fully admit that. And so um, I find this little guy hard to resist. I'm embossing him on some watercolor paper. It's 140 pound Canson watercolor paper. And I'm going to actually paint with coffee today. Besides stamping the Newton in Versafine ink and clear embossing it, I am stamping the solid coffee cup in the Mama Elephant pigment ink. And pigment ink stays wet, and that's why you can emboss with it. The Versafine is actually a pigment ink, which means that it's a very wet and sticky ink. And because it stays wet for a while, the embossing powder will stick to it and melt on top of it. You can do this with distress inks as well, as long as you work very quickly, and you might not want to stamp all five before you put the uh, clear embossing powder on. I just wanted to have some teal coffee cups without having to color them in, and it's been a while since I experimented with those pigment inks. I find that I don't use them very often, because unless you clear emboss them, they stay wet for a really long time and can always smear your project. Once I had Newton color, uh, stamped onto the watercolor paper, I'm going to cover him with this Molotow pen. It is a masking fluid pen, and basically it will protect Newton from the watercoloring that I'm about to do. You cannot use paper masks when you're watercoloring because it could seep under the paper mask, and instead you need some sort of liquid masking. I have some fluid fine line masking pen. Um, but I find that that bottle is really difficult to use and difficult to get the liquid out. But this Molotow pen, while kind of pricey, really does a great job. It dries really quickly. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to put down. And I could see using it a lot because I really like doing watercolor. And this is a quick way to cover the critters. All you have to do is just make sure you've traced every area of the critters and that the area is blue. I decided to cover up the coffee cups. In theory, they should resist because they already are clear embossed, but because it's on watercolor paper, sometimes you don't get the best impression of embossing or of the ink, and so I just wanted to make sure they'd be protected as well. So in about 10 minutes, probably less, your Molotow pen will be dry and you'll be ready to add your watercolor over it. Instead of watercoloring with regular watercolor, just to mix it up and have fun and to go with this Coffee Lover's Blog Hop, I brewed some coffee and I'm painting with coffee around Newton and the Cups. I like the idea of working with teal and brown as a fun color combination and um, a good fall combination, but I will be pulling in some other colors in the actual coloring of Newton. To color with the coffee, you probably want a pretty strong brew. I have a very light color here, and um, actually what probably will be best is if you had some instant coffee, because then you can make small cups of different colors, like you can make some stronger and some weaker, so that way you would get a variety of looks. But I did not have instant coffee, I just brewed up the coffee that happened to be in my home at the time. You could of course do this with tea as well. Um, because I, I know in the Coffee Lovers blog hop you can use tea, coffee, or cocoa themed things. I would not recommend coloring with hot cocoa for obvious reasons. Um, uh, but even this one, I, this is a hazelnut coffee and it kind of left my paper sticky. So I don't know if this was like the best idea I ever had, but it was super fun. And sometimes that's what this is about, is playing and having fun. So I probably write a note to the person that I send this card to, just because I wouldn't want to attract any bugs or anything with the card. So once I had an overall wash, I wanted to add some darker areas and watercolor when it dries at the edges tends to leave those darker rings and the marks and that to me helped it make it look more like coffee. It really looked like someone had accidentally spilled coffee on Newton. 
And that was the look I was going for. So I went back and just tapped on the color in random places. And I created some drip effect from the top left to the bottom right. Because that will help me tie in some elements later. But the main splotch of coffee is right around Newton and his cups. To remove the Molotov pen, I've heard you can just rub it off with your hands. But I have an adhesive eraser here from, I believe it's from Zyron. And... To me, it does a fantastic job. It pulls it off really, really easily, and I'm not worried about damaging anything underneath. And you just rub it over pretty gently until all of it comes off. Because you're working on watercolor paper, um, it tends to be able to take a little bit more abuse, but um, you're not actually going to harm your paper at all with that masking fluid. It will stay when you're watercoloring. When you want it to come off, it will come off easy. I'm very impressed with the quality of that pen so far. So once I finished, I wanted to do some watercolor markers on Newton. A lot of people have the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. I resisted them because they're pretty expensive, and I have a lot of color mediums. I'm pretty invested in Copics. But one day at Michael's, I saw these Winsor Newton watercolor pens or markers on sale for an incredible price, like a dollar something a marker, and I said, I have to try it. For that price, you know, I love color, I love coloring, and I love watercolor, so I just had to have it. But these markers normally retail for about $8 a piece. They are crazy expensive, so I'm not necessarily saying that I recommend you get them, because as much as they do a beautiful job, and I do like them, I find them to be very expensive. So, you know, I would only recommend them if you would get them for a great deal but they act very much like the zigs. They don't have a real brush tip, but they do have that watercolor marker effect, so it's a really strong color the way the zigs have a strong color. They can blend together wet or dry. I'm, dry. I'm blending them together dry first, but then extending it a little bit with just a touch of water. You can touch the marker to the wet surface, I love my Inktense pencils, but it's hard to go back and add more color. With the Winsor Newton markers, you can easily add more color because you can touch it to the wet paper, which is um, a little bit more unusual. And with Distress markers, you can't really put those to paper and watercolor with them because they don't really move a lot on paper, where these markers move beautifully on the paper and you can get an easily blended out effect. So if you're um, ever, you know, happen upon them at a great sale and you wanted to try them out, definitely give them a go. But they are definitely an artist marker, so they come at a little bit higher of a price range. And when you're working with them, you can work dry or wet and get the blended effect. I have a very limited palette because I only stumbled upon a few on sale, but you can use the same principles that you use with ink tense pencils. So I put down a little bit of color on each of the sides and then blend it out so that I get a highlight in the center. And that's exactly what I would do if I was coloring with ink tense pencils. If you do happen to have two colors, you can, um, you know, create a blend on the outside and then leave the center white just kind of how I do with my Copics and then blend them out. However, um, what I do like about these compared to the ink tents as well, besides being able to color on wet, is that you can pull up a little bit more color. With the ink tents, once it's on the paper, it's a little bit harder to pull up. These act a little bit more like true watercolor in the sense that if you add enough water, you can pull the color back up more easily and so I guess if I was really like if I had to pick one um, I would say the Winsor Newton markers are probably better but they're considerably more expensive even regular open stock ink tense pencils are like two or I think like three dollars you know but then the Winsor Newton markers like I said I think they retail for about seven or eight so to tie in the teal I'm taking a teal ink pad and running it along the edges of a card mat that's just slightly bigger than my watercolor panel there which was cut with the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle die. And I wanted to incorporate that green a little bit more. I had chose the green for the coffee cup because brown, teal, and green are a great co color combination. They complement each other well. I used this website 
that has um, a color wheel called Color Scheme Designer that to help me pick my color combinations sometimes and to tie in the blue and brown. Uh, the green was came as a, as a natural complement to them. However, my green gems were a little bit too light and I wanted them to be more in the shade of the coffee cup. So what I did was I just took my Copic markers and colored them with a slightly darker green. If you have Spectrum Noirs, that would work as well, but it needs to be some sort of alcohol marker. However, it wouldn't have looked um, bad if they were a lighter green, but it's just something because I have the access to the markers, I gave it a shot. And I just laid them down in a smattering from the top left to the bottom right to mimic the smattering of the coffee. Here I'm using my Martha Stewart scoring so I can't remember the name of it, Martha Stewart's, Martha Stewart's scoring board and my Teflon bone folder. I recently picked up this bone folder. It is definitely higher quality than the one that comes with the Martha Stewart. It does not leave any marks on your paper. And, um, it, you know, I could see that it, I would definitely say that it's better, but it is pretty pricey. So keep that in mind. If you are somebody who scores a lot of heavy card stock, though, it might be worth it. I did find that the gems had a little bit of trouble sticking, so I just could add some multimedia matte. Even though they are self-adhesive gems, that's what you could always do if they're having some trouble because the multimedia matte won't show off the edges. So once I have all those gems finally in place, that's going to be it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, including watercolor, Copic markers, Newton's Nook, Lawn Fawn, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you check out the link below to join the Co Fall Coffee Lovers Blog Hop and enter for your chance to win. Thanks for watching. Bye.